Well, my name is Algernon George Parkins. That's the slave name that I was given. I would say people don't become Rasta. You're born. Some people are born of the spirit. Some people are born of the flesh. Yeah, so we are all not the same. Yeah, you know, but we can learn from each other and learn. And for me, when I was a child, 14 years old, like I told you, I, I going to Catholic school, going to church, whatever. And then I didn't like what I see around. Because all the Christians, my sisters and family, when they go to church, they have to pretty shoes. They have to do their hair, the pretty clothes and everything. And I always Christian, my mind, how come they can't just go to church and it just round the corner, sit down and pray? And when I look at that, I saw the Christian in my mind. Oh, you have to question yourself. Don't believe everything people tell you. And then I could see the Rasta man or him having little drum and a play and they go on and beat. And it, you, could, you could feel much better. It's more relaxed. It's more easy. There was no hypocrisy. He didn't have to straighten his hair. He didn't have to put any fancy clothes. And I started to look at John the Baptist and Christ in them time. That's the way it usually be. After 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, Christ didn't come out looking rosy and dressed and smell good and tidy. No. Guy was with the animals and birds. He wasn't with people. Because people didn't like him. So why I become Rasta? Because when I look at all the other religions, I didn't thought they were doing what the Bible was saying. So I couldn't put, see the relation between. And then the more questions arrive. And when you start to ask yourself questions, then that means you're looking for answers. But today, most people don't ask questions. They settle for anything they see, they hear, and what they think. But you keep asking the question, and the answers will reveal themselves to you. And so I become a Rasta because I didn't like the other the way the other religions were performing which i know most about them because i read fortunately more and i become a rational because that's the only one i see that is close to my heart it's the only people that go around the world and talk about love we are the only people that their system hate just like they hate christ as far as i'm concerned that's a good sign it was 1966 when his majesty came to jamaica I was a little boy, but basically, I never seen and no other Jamaican and nobody in the world can question this. It's one of the most beautiful impact day or days of our life because I seen things that and other people seen things that never only once it happened before in life and it's when Christ was coming to Jerusalem and the people were throwing palm leaves and singing Hosea in the ice it was the same situation in Jamaica and anybody who was there can repent there was no leaves on any trees there was you don't have to pay in taxes or bus. Just jump on the top jump on it and do whatever and they take you where you want to go and everybody not just rasta everybody why everybody with leaf waving and all over the island the island was in a turmoil for that day and witnesses were there millions of people seen it we took testify to and i heard one man said my god i never seen it he was just talking what a white man walking with his wife i never seen it like this in my life and it everybody was happy police a man rasta man could smoke his guns and on the street free public you everything was free for that day everybody was free there was freedom free spirit for that day i'm not saying this because Jah was there or rastafari was there but people got to make that decision for themselves and that day i or any jamaica anybody you see it will never forget that where well, my life been affected i would say uh because of the evil and the frustration uh, I felt and feeling about the situation or the treatment of, of people in general. You know, so my life been affected not because of my personal reason, or, or, but, but my visual uh, understanding and social understanding of my surrounding. It affects me. I go out there and I see uh, a old lady crossing the street and somebody uh, wouldn't help her cross the street. I say, what happened to people? People start to lose some money. So little things like that affects me. It doesn't have to be something big. It's when the little things that I think humanly uh, uh, reasonable should have been done and not been dealt with by you, he or she or anybody, I question. And there's so many questions now in my mind because there's so many people neglecting their duty, their human duty, their social duty. Uh, and, uh, and that's my effect. It's not big, but it's small. It still affects me more and disturbs me too. And I'm not the only one going through this. You know, but people don't speak out how they feel anymore. Everybody tries to suppress and all their feeling until they get hungry and it comes out in a different way violently most of the times rastafari why do the eden rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth set themselves together and rulers take counsel against the lord god and against the anointed saints let us break their band asunder and cast away this evil from among us 
In the name of His Imperial Majesty Emperor I Selassie I Ja Rastafari Selassie I Babylon Every evil government is Babylon England, America, you name them And you know what? You tell me one country now that people is living in happy Or they're sharing the wealth Or the social, the socialization of the people are sharing There's not one there's enough money, there's enough food, but they cause some wage and price control. They find all kinds of reasons. They've been finding rather in order to keep uh, people down. It's not Rasta anymore. I would say England, which is Mother Babylon, we know we're here and we got work to do. And we're working on it. But at the end of the day, the kids today, as we know in England, uh, they all respect Rasta man. And I say give thanks to that. Because they're, not, they're still searching without even know they're searching. They're looking without know they're looking. They're listening without knowing they're listening. But at the end of the day, that was like me when I was a child until I grew into who I am today because that's what I see, that's what I hear, and that's what I feel. And I'm not the only Rasta man here. And then when the kids see me on the street, yes, Dread, yes, Rasta. And uh, that showed me that the light is shining.